Sports Director Marcelo Vernon Wallace Sr., the Hall of Famer here, joined by my man George Sedano's in the house. What up? LZ Lee Granderson somewhere over there. But we got ESPN the magazine senior writer. Woo! You know she grown. ain't that old. Senior. She ain't old, but she's a senior writer. She's being a kind. Really? How yes. you doing? Yes. All right, I'll take it. Hey. All right, how you doing? I'm good. We don't care. Wrong show. I uh, see we get it sports, and we go quick into it. Y'all stupid. Leave her alone. <laughs> Let's get started with Going Places, presented by Toyota. And last night, LeBron James led the Cavs to a 22-point beatdown over the Pistons, and he was helped by the new starter, Larry Nance Jr., scored a career-high 22 points, grabbed 15 boards. And after the game, Coach Lou said Nance will start for at least the next two weeks. Mina, should the Cavs stick with Nance in the middle? Yes, absolutely. And this cuts to what I was complaining about yesterday, which was the coaching and the lineups. Mm -hmm. They are so much better with these young guys in. Offensive rating when LeBron and Larry Nance play, 124. Defensive rating, 102. He is such an upgrade over Tristan Thompson. It's a no-brainer for me. Yeah. Well, if you look at the Los Angeles Lakers after the trade, huh? they were pretty good defensively, and their defense just collapsed as soon as Larry Nance Jr. was gone. That gives you a sense of just how important he can be on that side of the ball. Not surprising at all to see these highlights right here. He's one of the most athletic guys, you know, around. But the one thing I will caution, they beat the Pistons, mm. right? Ninth C in the East. Blake Griffin's over there was supposed to help him elevate to be a playoff team. He Not did at happening. first. He did at first. Not happening. He did at first. <laughs> Look, as long as LeBron is on this roster, you have to play the players who play best with LeBron. It's a very simple equation. And some other numbers to look at with these two particular guys are the plus minus numbers when they're on the floor. Plus 53 when Larry Nance is on the floor with LeBron. Minus 29 when they're off the floor. Okay? It's that mm. simple. You put the guys who are best with LeBron on the floor with LeBron. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about it. He is the chef, only one in the kitchen. Before the trade deadline, there were too many damn chefs in the kitchen, right? He said, get these people out of town, Isaiah Thomas, et cetera. Now you have the waiters. They're going to serve the meal. LeBron's going to cook it up. It's just that simple. When you have that natural pecking order and guys respect that, know their proper roles, you let them go out there and play. They are young, they're athletic, they're energy players, as coaches would call them, the remote controls. Those are the guys that go, hey, go give me the remote. They'll go get it while you sit there on the couch. LeBron sits there comfortably and lets everyone out there go do the work. Smart equation right here. Now let's get to a serious topic. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We got to get to a serious topic right now. Uh, Kevin Love released an article in the Players' <laughs> Tribune about his mental health and his battle with anxiety and panic attacks. Love specifically discussed the game early November where he said from the tip he didn't feel right. Checked himself out the game, retreated to the locker room, and was later escorted to the hospital. Here's more from Kevin Love, quote, I was running from room to room like I was looking for something I couldn't find. Really, I was just hoping my heart would stop racing. It was like my body was trying to say to me, you're about to die. I ended up on the floor in the training room, lying on my back, trying to get enough air to breathe. George, your reaction to Kevin Love opening up about his mental health? Empathy. Um, I've been there. I've had a panic, a panic attack before. I know what it feels like. It, it, literally, I'd never had one just like him. And all of a sudden, I thought I was having a heart attack, and I was in my 20s. Wow. And I'm like, what is happening? What do you do? And then eventually, you calm down, you chill out, and you realize what happened. I went to a doctor immediately, much like Kevin did. And yeah, I think that I, I empathize with him, because unless you've had this, you don't understand what that feels like. And unfortunately, in the culture of the locker room, I think that some guys may not view it the same way that I do and give him empathy. Mm. What are you guys' response to this? I think it, this kind of cuts to the larger shut up and dribble conversation, which is why do we want athletes in particular to weigh in on social issues or personal issues or mental health in this case? And it's because it is so meaningful for someone like DeMar DeRozan or Kevin Love, people who are regarded as the strongest, fastest people in the world, to talk about something that's been construed as a weakness in the past. It is so meaningful and will create, I think, a bigger impact than anything else he does. Well, I, I would say that when you read the whole article, the thing that stood out to me was this, the very beginning where it talked about be a man and what it means to be a man. And it's been my opinion for a long time. Those three words are about as dangerous as any three words in modern day society. Mm -hmm. Be a man prevents us from going to the doctor when we don't feel well. Be a man doesn't allow us to express ourselves to be human. Be a man is the root of misogyny and transphobia and homophobia. I mean, there's so many things about this hyper identification of masculinity that prevents us from doing the things that mean that allows us to be human so i applaud kevin love for being a man and being human because those two things are one and the same not separate yeah it's interesting the elements that he described in terms of being a professional athlete 
all the different resources you have. Uh, you have a nutritionist, a dietitian, you got a weight coach, strength and conditioning coach. You got everyone who's sitting there trying to add to what you are as the athlete. And no one's thinking about the person who's before the athlete. And he's talking about now, why don't we have a therapist on staff for every single team and make that something that is CBA related or, or more so. And it's interesting, you know, playing with guys, uh, it's not to be a man has always been a disturbing issue with the locker room, within the locker room, because you got to think about be a man has the positives, the pros as well, which means fight through adversity, you know, not everything should crumble you in those situations. And that's part of what professional athletics is. But that's being I, an adult. That's not being a man. That's well, just being an adult. Well, I understand that. It yeah. could be a be a man, be a woman, but I don't want to just make it one one-sided because we also know there are some attributes that are positive mm -hmm. from fighting through it if you want to attribute that to be a man or be a woman or be a person thing about this what I love is like it signifies to everyone else out there who is not in that same position that same platform looked at with that same esteem mm -hmm. that you're okay yes. it's not just that the great ones are perfect no the great ones suffer as well but they fight through that and now they're letting you know what that fight looks like respect well the reality is and you know this playing in football of yeah. all people it's the sport where you're supposed to feel indestructible, right? Oh, you yeah. have to put that Superman cape on. But professional sports in general, we've created this situation where these guys do feel that way. And you almost feel like, in Kevin Love's case, if you read his story, he felt bad that he had to go to the doctor. Like, he's like, maybe I'm less of a man in this situation because of it. Now he's thankful he actually did. But this isn't just about sports. I mean, in society, we still have a difficult time talking about mental sure. illness or mental health no doubt. in a way in which people aren't stigmatized. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever there happens to be an unfortunate mass shooting we stigmatize mental illness with with the the, the violence because yeah. we haven't figured out our proper vocabulary to keep those things separate that just because you have mental health issues doesn't mean that you're prone for violence i mean we have a long way to go just in general with this conversation but i'm really happy that kevin love has opened this door i am as well but um uh, let's let's play devil's advocate here and you know what's interesting i know about the locker room and i know how it translates that if a guy has physical health issues mm -hmm. we say hey man you're injury prone when you get to a place where you have mental health issues, it's not going to be digested properly in that locker room no, because no. you are selected to be a professional athlete. It is not a birthright. It's a privilege. And I just want to know how we're going to reconcile mental health issues with physical health issues when we know we put a stigma on it's physical a, health. It's a maturity thing. It's based on the individuals in your locker room. Some guys will get it and be like, yo, man, I got you, whatever you need. And some dudes are going to be like, this dude's soft. And that's the reality of the world he's going to deal with. And I think with. it's helpful that it's public because we right. so often in sports, there's whisper campaigns. Guys hear about these conditions or things other guys are going through and they taunt them and they use it against them. But when it's out in the public like that, suddenly it's not as cool. And, you know, maybe your teammates right. pass back a little more. We saw LeBron sure. came out and supported him this morning. That's meaningful as well. Yeah, we're I mean, talking about Your teammates is one thing, though. But it's the opponents that you really have to look out for. <laughs> for sure. And as, and as I say, in warfare, war ain't fair. Mm. If they out there battling, somebody's going to say some stuff. Yeah. Coin, coin that phrase right there. And speaking of my game, let's move on to my sport. And according to ESPN's Chris Mortensen, the Eagles have received multiple trade offers for Nick Foles, but are setting a high price, very high price. And that price is reportedly more than the first and fourth round picks they received from the Vikings for Sam Bradford prior to the start of the 2016 season. So, LZ, mm -hmm. are the Eagles asking too much for Nick Foles? Well, is that Nick Foles that was with the Rams and played for Jeff Fisher or the one that just won the Super Bowl? Mm. The one that won the Super Bowl mm. is worth all of that and some. Mm. I would much rather have a Nick Foles back there, an experienced QB who's obviously shown you he can handle high pressure situation than going and trying to build around a rookie right now. So if you, got, if you have a first round pick and you need a QB, I would look at that before I would a rookie. Mm. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Nick Foles in three games, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The with, three games, with, Nick Foles. With the best coach in the Oh, oh really? <laughs> just, just, just the three games? Or do you want to talk about the one time which you played with Chip Kelly? He had one of the best TD to interception ratio. Oh, if you want to grab my highlight game. reel, I'm in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that's I mean, what I mean. So you want to go there? Three no, I said yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You want to grab highlight reels? Well, everybody well, in the Hall of Fame. See, I was prepared for that, which is the reason why I brought the Jeff Fisher thing. Oh, okay. You can't, you can't say you were with Jeff Fisher. He so now you he was an only coach. Yeah, what about Kansas City? He was a backup. Oh, to Alex Smith. Oh, okay. so oh, what about you're a backup. Next, hold on, what about so the reason year, you're a backup? The next year in because, Philly. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, he was with Chip still. Yeah, and he broke his collarbone, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. He played okay. 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 all that. He had a collarbone. They asked, the NFL insiders were asked, 
what would you give up for Nick Foles? We all, almost to a person, said a second round pick. So a first yeah. seems rich because think about it. If you're a football team, your starting quarterback was an MVP caliber quarterback. Would you trade your backup for a second round pick? Absolutely, most of the time, except Carson Wentz is injured. And this tells me right. that he might not be starting week one. Week yeah. one. Which, yeah, sure, hold on to Nick Foles, if that's the case. That is the point, that you, ha you don't know what Wentz's injury is going to look like, right? We expect him to be back, but he may not be, so you got to hold on to him. Maybe just deal him at the deadline. But I'll say this, I don't trade him for a second round pick, no. because he's not Hell a no. traditional backup. Clearly, at this point, you've seen his value. You can use the value LZ's talking about to get more than a second rounder. So a one and a four, to me, is the beginning to have a conversation. You start there, but I'd probably go one and a three, one and a two. See what, what you can get. You yes. can ask for whatever you want, Mina. Yes. You have to, Mina. First of all, the mark has already dictated that that's what the value is. If so, wow. if Sam Bradford got a one and a four, you Come think I'm letting Nick Foles go right. for a two? Jimmy Garoppolo got a two, though. Okay, and Jimmy Garoppolo had two games started right. when he got the two. Right. Guess what? This dude is one of, he's at Disney World still yeah. right is now. He still? He oh, might be. No, I might be. <laughs> he don't know if he ever getting back. So he's like, I'm still. <laughs> Buffalo or false? Come on. Don't do me like that. I'm it's taking Jimmy James. I always take potential. What? But you know what? That's because it's a blank canvas in comparison to Nick Foles. That doesn't mean Nick Foles can't outperform Jimmy Garoppolo. The thing they pay the most for in the NFL is not production. It's potential. Right. We know that. When we can just sell you to the fan base, look, he's done nothing. Seven starts, no losses. Jimmy G. Well, that sounds good. That's and it sounds great, right? Pay him the most ever in the NFL. Give me that guy. Until they go out there and game plan for Jimmy G next right. year, exactly. we'll figure this out, right? right? A little different. Nick Foles found that out after the 27 and 2 year. Yeah. Time for three jeers. And the first jeer is for David Nwaba. Nwaba? Nwaba? Nwaba. Oh, huh? Uh, we got the Bulls right here. No! Oh, oh, that's it. Who moved on cheese? At the Marquee <laughs> Challenge? This year? The Marquee Challenge? Yeah, uh, oh, how do wow. you airball the free throw? Like, <laughs> right, right, man. Man. Somebody Two cheers. Denzel Valentine. Another Back to back Same bull? Game. Another yeah. bull. Uh, Valentine throwing oh, from behind. Whoa! Yeah, look cool if it would have gone to someone. Go with yeah. Bro, that's not. <laughs> yo, that wasn't his fault. Was that you, LZ? That's yeah, LZ yeah. at the Y over yeah, here. That's LZ. It was one of his hands out. Three cheers for Tyler Ennis. Oh, I was here for that game. Bro, Blazers. Lakers. Oh, no. The Lady Cooper are broken. Oh. It ain't as bad as Wesley Johnson, though. Well, it was no push off. That's why. Yeah. Is that what it is? I'm just saying, there was a push off of James Harden. Respect, though. It was a sick play, but like hang in there, my man. Coming up next, Lance Stevenson was up to his old way oh, again last night. Buckets! You think, guys, he takes it a little too far? Let's be real. Mm, I don't think we'll so. This is Sports Nation. Spring is coming. Enjoy the season with a great